Hello all, it's Nathan again with Follow My Vote. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a graphene slash bit shares testnet and GUI, which is necessary if you want to alpha test the Follow My Vote voting system. Um, you'll need a running blockchain that you can publish contests on and cast votes on, etc., etc. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the graphene side of that. In a subsequent video, I will show you how to set up the Follow My Vote software on top of that testnet. So to get us started, um, I'm using a Antergos Linux installation. This is in a virtual machine. It's just a fresh install of Antergos with KDE. So to get us started, we're going to launch up a console. And I'm just going to make a folder called dev that we can do our work in. Let's expand that window a little bit. All right. And in that dev folder, we're going to fetch the graphene code. So git clone github.com slash follow my vote slash graphene and also dash dash recursive. So that's going to download graphene and all of the dependencies, the submodules that it has included. Um, you'll note that we are fetching that from Follow My Votes fork of graphene, not the original cryptonomics fork. That's because I have made some changes, some updates to graphene, which have not been merged upstream yet. So you will need to get the Follow My Vote fork if you want to run Follow My Vote software. If you're not interested in running Follow My Vote software and you're just following this guide for graphene, then you can go ahead and grab the cryptonomics fork instead, which is just replace Follow My Vote with cryptonomics and you'll get the vanilla graphene straight from cryptonomics. So while that's downloading, I'm going to go ahead and start cloning the graphene GUI as well. So git clone github.com slash follow my vote again slash graphene UI. And this will get the follow my vote fork of the graphene GUI, which has support for third party software. Um, which we need um, in order to have our app connect to the graphene GUI and there, thereby um, make changes to the blockchain. So graphene is finished downloading. I am going to CD into the graphene folder. And uh, so before we can really get started, I need to install some dependencies. So let's go ahead and do that. So yawert dash s and the dependencies I will need are boost, clang, npm, and ninja. Alrighty. And it looks like that shouldn't take too long. All right, and now that we've got NPM installed, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up the GUI first. Um, so CD graphene-UI. And uh, from there, CD into the DL folder, which stands for data layer. And we need to install a bunch of dependencies for that. So to do that, we need to do run NPM install from the graphene UI slash DL folder. So that's going to fetch all of those dependencies and do any build and installation steps that are necessary and take care of that for us. And so now going back to graphene itself, I can now configure graphene. So I'm going to do CMake and I need to pass several flags. So the first is dash G ninja. Um, I do need to set the compilers to Clang. So dash D C make CXX compiler equals clang plus plus dash D C make C compiler is clang. I want to set the build type to debug. Um, that'll be useful for debugging purposes. Um, if you're not concerned about debugging the code at all, then you can use release and it will build a little bit slower, run a little bit faster. 
Uh, but I would say just go with debug personally because this is a test net. We're not crunching massive amounts of data here. So the difference between debug and release is going to be virtually negligible. So dash d cmake build type equals debug. And I also want to set the install prefix. So dash d cmake install prefix equals slash opt slash graphene. So that's going to cause graphene to install into slash opt slash graphene when it finishes building. So that's all we need for now, and we can just run CMake like that. Okay, that worked. So we can just run Ninja to actually build the software. So that's going to take quite a while. Um, while that's running, I'm going to switch back over here. And the data layer for Graphene UI is still installing its dependencies. So I'm going to open up another tab and cd into the graphene UI slash web folder and also run npm install to get all of the dependencies for the web portion of the graphene UI as well. So that's going to install all of the dependencies for the graphene UI and um, we're also waiting on the graphene build itself to complete so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the video for now, and I'll be right back as soon as all of this stuff finishes. All right, I'm back, and Graphene has finished building, so the next thing we can do is install it. So ninja install, and actually I'm going to need to run that as root, so sudo ninja install. All right, and that's installing to opt slash graphene just as we wanted. So we're done in the data layer folder of the web GUI, so we can close this tab. And now in the web folder, we can start the server for the graphene GUI by running npm start. So that's going to do some final build and setup processes, and then it's going to launch the server for us. So we'll go ahead and let that do its thing. And pretty soon we should have an installed copy of Graphene. All right, so that's done. And we can now run slash op slash graphene slash bin slash witness node. All right, now that started up a witness node for us. We're going to go ahead and hit control C immediately and turn that off again. Now what that did for us is it created the witness node data directory. So if we look in this folder, witness node data dir, we can see several files that it's created for us, but uh, the one we're interested in right now is that config.ini, the default witness configuration. So let's go ahead and edit that. And there's a couple things I need to do in here. The first thing I need to do is set an RPC endpoint, and we're just going to set that to localhost on port 8090. And the next thing I need to do is to enable stale production. Um, this is a test net. Now in a live real blockchain network, a public blockchain, um, 
Stale production is a protect protection feature to prevent you from basically spinning up your own fork on a real blockchain. But this is a witness, um, a testnet, so we are our own fork. There's only one block producer. So we'll need to have stale production turned on in order to actually produce any blocks. And finally, we need to add some witness IDs that this node will produce for. So we'll uh, add several of those. 1.6.0 There we go. Alright, and now if we run the witness node again on this new data dir, here we go, we see a message saying new chain, welcome to graphene, and it generated block number one. So the witness node is up and running, and that's a live blockchain that is producing blocks. As we can see here, the bundle is valid in the, uh, the web GUI, so we should be able to go ahead and start that up. So let's go ahead and fire up a web browser. Now, the Graphene GUI listens on localhost port 8080, so we'll go ahead and open that up. Localhost port 8080. And here we have the Graphene GUI loading up for us. All right. Now, You'll note that this is actually connected to bit shares right now. Um, the head block is in the, what, eight millions? Um, so that's because the Graphene GUI by default connects to the live bit shares servers running by uh, Open Ledger. So we need to change those to point to our testnet instead. So let's go to the settings up here, hit this little gear in the upper right corner. And we're gonna hit access in the menu over here we need to add a new API, and that's going to be at the, uh, the RPC port that we opened up on our witness node. So that would be localhost port 8090. So confirm that. Now we can select that one from our list of API connections and confirm. So that's gonna cause the GUI to reload, and when it finishes loading, we should see block numbers in the bottom right that correspond to the uh, the current state of our testnet here. So head block number 20, head block number 20. Perfect, so that worked great. Um, the next thing we need to do before we have a working graphene UI on this testnet is we need to actually get the money, the, the funds in this testnet into an account that we control. So let's go to the settings again. And the first thing we need to do is create a wallet to put those uh, to put that account into. So hit wallet on the left here and new wallet. It's going to ask you for a password, so just make one up. This is a test net, so it doesn't have to be a good one. All right, we have a wallet now. Hit done. And the next thing we need to do is import the private key. So um, if we go to restore slash import here and we click on uh, this menu here, that should drop down, come on. It's going pretty slow right now. I'm not sure exactly what's up there. Uh, well, while that's contemplating itself, um, Okay, there we go. And select import a private key. So that gives us a field here where we can paste a private key. Um, now the obvious question is what private key is that? Well, if we go back to the, uh, the witness node here and scroll up to the top of its output when it first started, it actually told us the private key that controls all the funds in the testnet. So that's this with ID to uh, with pair here. We've got a public key there and a private key here. So we're gonna take that private key and we're gonna paste it in there, submit. All right, and that says there were uh, unclaimed balances belonging to these keys, and that's, what, 10 billion core or so? So that's all of the money in the testnet. So we're gonna import the balance there. 
All right, so that imported the key. We don't actually have an account that controls those funds yet, though. So let's go to wallet here. And um, we're going to say lookup balances. I'm going to say uh, the Nathan account. Select the Nathan account. Um, which is the default account in the network. Um, the init accounts are for creating blocks, and then the Nathan account is for actually using the network. So we select the Nathan account, uh, we choose that 10 billion core balance, and we claim it into the Nathan account. So that's going to broadcast a transaction claiming that balance. We confirm that. You can see the transaction being processed in the, um, in the blockchain here, and the transaction is confirmed. So if we go to our dashboard and pull up the Nathan account, I'm going to star it so that it floats to the top. Um, open the Nathan account, we see that we have all 10 billion core in the Nathan account, and that's an account we control. So this is now a graphene testnet that is set up and running, and you can do whatever you want with it. It's a working blockchain that's only running on your computer. You get to use it for anything you want to do. So thank you for watching. In the next video, I'm going to show how to set up the Follow My Vote software on top of this testnet. Thank you.